Picking the correct RAID type is arguably the most important thing you can do when setting up a new NAS. But the correct RAID type will be different for everybody based on whatever your requirements are. So in this video, we're gonna take a look at what each RAID type is, how it works, so you can decide exactly which option you should use based on your individual requirements. Now I wanna jump right into this, but before we get to that, RAID is not a backup. So realistically, it shouldn't matter what RAID type you select because you will have a full set of backups that you can always restore from if you ever had to. So now that that's out of the way, let's jump right into it. And the first thing that we're gonna take a look at is RAID 1. Now RAID 1 simply is a mirrored pair. What that means is if you have two hard drives, the data will be the exact same on each hard drive. This is good from a read performance perspective because the data can be read from either hard drive. It will not impact write speeds, but read will be slightly faster. Now you can have more than two drives for RAID 1, but two drives is honestly, in my opinion, the easiest to understand. But the reality is you can lose either of those drives without losing any of your data. That's the power of it. It is a mirrored pair. Now RAID 5 is interesting because you have to use at least three disks and it has single parity. So what that means is that blocks of the data are written to all of the disks and one block is written as parity. So if you lose any of the disks, you will not lose any of your data. So let's say you have five hard drives, you can lose any of those five hard drives and you will not lose any of your data. If you lose two hard drives, you will lose the entire storage pool. That's what you're trying to avoid. Now RAID 5 has good read performance and it's slightly slower write performance because of writing parity. But the performance we're gonna talk about a little later because it might or might not be something you should take into consideration. So jumping into RAID 6, we have four minimum disks that you have to use and it's double parity. So what that means is you can lose two hard drives. If you have, using the example we used before, if you have five total hard drives and you lose two of them, you will not lose any of your data. You have to lose at least three of them to lose the entire storage pool. Now, from a performance perspective, RAID 6 has good read performance, but it's slower write performance, especially slower than RAID 5, because you're using double parity. Now, RAID 0, I'm gonna be very quick with this because there's no redundancy at all. Basically, it just makes all of the hard drives that you have into one big storage pool. And if you lose any of those hard drives, you will lose the entire storage pool. So there is no redundancy. But from a performance perspective, it's great because you're basically merging all of those hard drives into one big hard drive. That's kind of the easiest way to think about it. RAID 10. RAID 10 is interesting because you need to use at least four minimum drives. And what it does is RAID 10 is a striped mirrored pair. So it's basically RAID 1 plus RAID 0. So what you have is you kind of have the best of both worlds. You have great read and write speeds due to the RAID 0 but your data is mirrored because it has mirrored pairs. Now this is where it gets interesting because RAID 10 is viewed a lot of the times as the best from a redundancy perspective. And in very specific cases, it might be. But RAID 6 is actually a little better. And the reason is because if you lose any two drives in the same mirrored pair, you lose the entire storage pool. So I wanna repeat that. RAID 10 is RAID 1 plus 0, so you have striped mirrored pairs. If you lose two hard drives in one of those mirrored pairs, so those specific two hard drives, you will lose the entire storage pool. Now compare that to RAID 6, and if you lose two hard drives, you still have to lose a third in order to lose the entire storage pool. So from that perspective, RAID 6 is actually better from a redundancy perspective than RAID 10. Where it gets complicated is technically, let's say you're using eight total hard drives, you'll have four mirrored pairs. If you lose one hard drive from each of those mirrored pairs, you won't lose any of your data. So technically, you can lose up to a maximum of half the total drives with RAID 10, but it has to be specific hard drives. Obviously, you don't pick you know, what, what hard drive is gonna fail. So that's where it gets to be, you know, kind of messy because the reality is that you could potentially lose more than two drives, which is the only thing that RAID 6 protects against. But if you lose the right two drives, then you lose everything. So 
from a performance perspective, Ray 10 is great because it is once again, a striped mirrored pair. So the only other things I wanna talk about is if you're using Synology devices, Synology has SHR and SHR2. Now SHR basically will just allow you to go in and use mixed size drives. So if you have two eight terabyte hard drives and you have two four terabyte hard drives as an example, what you'll see is that with RAID 5, you will have usable storage space of 10.9 terabytes, but you'll have 7.3 terabytes that is unused space. You can't use it at all, it just sits there. With SHR, it basically, the way that it writes the data to the actual hard drives, it allows you to utilize some of that additional storage space. So with SHR, you will have 14.5 terabytes available, which is, I don't know, a little more than three terabytes uh, compared to RAID 5 and you'll have 7.3 total terabytes saved for protection. So you're utilizing hard drive space that with RAID 5, you wouldn't be able to use. Now SHR2 and RAID 6 are basically the same where you can have two drives of redundancy, um, but it will do the same. It will allow you to utilize storage space that RAID 6 would not allow you to utilize. So SHR, one drive you can lose. SHR2, two drives you can lose. And SHR can be compared to RAID 5, SHR 2 can be compared to RAID 6, though you might have additional storage space with SHR. Just keep in mind that SHR is Synology Hybrid RAID, and you're basically allowing yourself flexibility. If you're gonna use the same size hard drives, in my opinion, you should just utilize RAID. But if you're not sure what size hard drives you wanna use, in my opinion, SHR is a great option. Let's take a look at a few important notes. So the first is that if you select RAID 5 or SHR, you can convert your storage pool at a later date to RAID 6 if you're using RAID 5 or SHR 2 if you're using SHR. Now that rebuild process is gonna take a while. It's gonna take a long time, but the point is that you can do it. So if you select RAID 6 right off the bat, you can't go back to RAID 5. If you select SHR2 right off the bat, you cannot go back to SHR. That is an important thing to mention. Next, we talked about performance. Now performance is always important. Faster read write speeds will be better than slower read write speeds. I would say that it's something you should take into consideration, but it shouldn't be the only deciding factor. Generally, if you have a storage pool that has to be extremely performant, you'll know it up front. And that's what we're gonna talk about in a minute here, that your requirements are ultimately gonna determine which option you should use. So should you take performance into account? Yes, you should. Should it be the only thing you take into consideration? No, especially if you're not willing to look at exactly what you're gonna be doing on it and potential network performance that you have. There's a lot of factors you have to take into consideration. The final thing I wanna point out is rebuild time. So when you lose a hard drive, what you're gonna to have to do, if it fails for whatever reason, what you're gonna to have to do is replace it. And when you replace it, whatever RAID type you're using will slowly rebuild that hard drive. Some are better than others. So if you're using RAID 1, the rebuild will be fast. If you're using RAID 10, the rebuild will be fast. If you're using RAID 5, the rebuild will be slower. If you're using RAID 6, the rebuild will be the slowest. It also stresses the other drives. So if you're using RAID 6, for example, and you lose one hard drive, you're stressing the other hard drives that you have. Now you have an extra drive for redundancy. So in a worst case scenario, if in that rebuild process, you lose one of those hard drives, it's okay because you still have redundancy. With RAID 5, you will not have it. So should you take rebuild times into consideration? Yes, you should take them into consideration, but once again, they should not be the only deciding factor that you have. If you have a good set of backups, because RAID is not a backup, generally you're protected and you can pick whichever option you think makes the most sense. So now that we got that out of the way, I wanna point out a few general suggestions. And the reality is you should determine what option makes the most sense for you, but, Generally, we're just gonna talk really quickly about some options that you can use. So I wanna talk quickly about SSD cache. I have an article on SSD cache that I will leave in the description of the video. Um, but if you're using read-write cache, you have to use RAID 1. Synology will not allow you to use RAID 0. But if you have a read-only cache, it generally makes sense to use RAID 0 because you're not actually writing anything to the hard drive. You're just trying to get the fastest overall performance. 
So you want those two NVMe SSD drives to work together to provide the fastest overall performance. So read-only cache, RAID 0. Read-write cache, RAID 1. Now, from a NAS hard drive perspective, if you have a two-bay NAS, you should use RAID 1 because SHR isn't gonna provide any additional flexibility. And if you were to have one of the higher end two bay NAS devices and you bought an expansion unit in the future, that cable that you're gonna to have to use is a point of failure. So you're not gonna have the same storage pool or you shouldn't have the same storage pool. So from that perspective, use RAID 1. Four bay NAS generally, I think is the sweet spot for RAID 5 because you can utilize one drive for redundancy and then you'll have the storage space of three total drives. So if you have four 10 terabyte drives, you'll have 30 terabytes of usable space and 10 terabytes saved for redundancy. Now, if you really, really care about having the highest level of redundancy, you can look at RAID 6. It might be a little overkill for a four bay NAS, but it is an option, especially if you're not gonna be storing that much data on it and you just want the additional protection. Shout out here as well for SHR and SHR2. When I say RAID 5 or RAID 6, you can realistically use either option. It will just depend on how flexible you want your storage pool to be. So a five bay NAS is where it it's really personal preference. You're probably gonna use RAID 5 or RAID 6. Um, Generally, this is the tipping point where I would say that you can use RAID 5 for a 5-bay NAS, but for anything more than that, you're probably not going to use RAID 5. So based on your requirements, RAID 5, RAID 6, SHR, or SHR2 for 5-bay NAS devices probably makes the most sense. So 6-bay and up, anything more than 6-bays, you would generally use RAID 6, SHR2, or RAID 10 based on your requirements. And the final thing I want to talk about is RAID 10. I saved it for last for a reason. If you're doing something very specific and you need the increased performance, RAID 10 is a great option, but it's not gonna be the best for all situations. So for example, if you have a four bay NAS and you're utilizing RAID 10, just remember that if you lose the right two hard drives, you're gonna lose your whole storage pool. With RAID 6, you won't. So if redundancy is important, RAID 6 is gonna be the better option in that case. But if you're in a scenario where you know you need the best overall performance, and I'm saying this because you most likely will know, or you're not watching this video because you already know you're, you're gonna use RAID 10. But RAID 10 is one of those interesting ones where if you have a four bay device, you technically can use it, though I'd probably suggest you don't. Six bay device and up you can, if you have a six bay, eight bay or higher, you can, it starts to make a little bit more sense in those. Uh, scenarios. It's also very common in enterprise environments to use RAID 10. But the overall truth here is that your requirements, meaning the amount of redundancy you want, the data that's going to be stored on the NAS, how sensitive it is, how important it is, how you know fast you would potentially need to rebuild a degraded storage pool, those requirements will determine which RAID option you should use. For the bulk of people, you're probably gonna be fine with RAID 1, RAID 5, or SHR, because I wanna say the most popular NAS devices are two bay and four bay NAS devices. And then as you go up, they get a little less popular. Um, so the majority of people are probably gonna use RAID 1, RAID 5, or SHR. As soon as you get to that six bay NAS and up, that's where you kind of have to really sit there and think about what option makes the most sense. The only thing I can tell you is you probably should never use RAID 0 unless you know for a fact you're using it for a very specific reason. So I'm hopeful that this video helped you guys out. If it did, please give it a thumbs up. If you like this type of content, please consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks, guys.